Hi, we're from Enlo High School, and this is our public health presentation. Heroin. Fentanyl. Codeine. Morphine. These are names of drugs that we've been hearing too often in newspaper headlines. Opioid abuse is now a national crisis. This is the story of Stacy, a teenager who fell victim to the opioid crisis. Stacy was a normal teenage girl. She enjoyed spending time with her friends and family and also got very high grades. This was her past. Until one day, she suffered a catastrophic soccer accident that damaged her spinal cord, putting her in chronic pain. Her doctors prescribed fentanyl, an opioid to manage the pain. After two years of being on pills and treat other treatments, Stacy is finally healed. But she doesn't stop taking the opioids. Even though her pain is gone, Stacy tells her doctors that she still needs the pills. She likes the way they numb the road around her. She's no longer the hard-working, energetic teen that she once used to be. Her addiction on these pills are negatively affecting her relationship with her family. They're pushing away her friends and everything else that she once loved. Her happiness and everything else in her life revolves around her dependence on these pills. Although it's difficult for her to see, from someone else's eyes, it's clear that she's addicted. This is Stacy now. The thing that started off as her lifeline turned into her enemy. If she continues on like this, Stacy's future is going to fall apart. But she can put an end to it before her future looks like this. It all started with a single pill. That was Stacy's story and that of 10.3 million Americans. Opioid abuse is the leading cause of preventable deaths. And the last thing we want is for one more teen, one of us, to fall victim to the crisis. Opioids are a class of drugs that work in the nervous system to produce both feelings of pleasure and pain relief. These opioids change the chemistry of the brain, leading to drug dependence, where more quantities of the drug has to be taken in order for the same effect to be achieved. Opioid abuse can stem from something as small as trying a friend's medication to as something as large as dealing with pain from a car accident. Nowadays, teens are finding it easier to obtain pills from their family, friends, and doctors. Once they start to get addicted, they find it hard dealing with it themselves. Opioid abuse is not a personality trait. It's a disease. And if we can understand this, we reach the first step in making our society a more supportive and safer one for opioid addicts. Together, we can stop the opioid crisis. Now let's talk about signs and symptoms. 
As shown in the video, symptoms get worse over time and may lead to death if the individual uses the drug for a prolonged period of time. Initial symptoms include fatigue, forgetfulness, isolation from previously enjoyed activities, general discontent, vomiting, and shallow breathing. Then symptoms start to develop into trouble sleeping, weight loss, nervousness, drug cravings, and abdominal pain. Opioid addiction causes detrimental effects to one's health, the biggest risk being overdose. Overdose happens due to large doses of opioids causing shortness of breath, leading to unconsciousness, and if not treated, death. Overdose can be identified by loss of consciousness, slow or stop breathing, hypertension, seizures, or hypothermia. We came up with an acronym to help you remember the steps and methods to take to stop the opioid crisis. This is the HEALD acronym. H stands for help. Opioid addicts are not alone, and this is why there are support groups available for people who may be addicted or think that they are at risk of getting addicted. Additionally, teens can call the National Helpline number at the number shown on the screen. Next is E, which stands for express. Sustain your addiction recovery through expression. Practicing expression is very important and can significantly increase your chance of addiction recovery. Let other people know how you're feeling. Make sure to rely on close friends and family for your support. A stands for abstain. To prevent misuse, take medications only prescribed by your doctor and in directed amounts. By following directions and being aware of the risks associated with taking more than directed, you prevent developing a dependence on the pills. The L stands for lock away. If you have prescription opioids, make sure to keep them in a safe, childproof place. The location that you keep your medicine in should be a place that only you know. Also, make sure to lock your medicine cabinet. This way, there is no risk of it falling into the wrong hands. E stands for educate. Now that you understand the dangers of using opioids and its signs and symptoms, educate your peers and family. Make sure that they are aware of the risks involved in using non-prescribed medications and the physical and psychological long-term effects of doing so. This is the most important method to prevent the opioid crisis that plagues our generation. D stands for dispose. If you have any unused medications, get rid of them as soon as possible to prevent any misuse. Local pharmacies have drug disposals for unused medications. If these aren't available near you, then mix the medications with something inedible, like coffee grounds or kitty litter, and dispose of it in the trash. Today, opioid abuse affects over 2 million people in the United States alone. 344,000 of those people are minors, just like us. In the past 20 years, 9,000 teens and children have died from opioid overdose. But if we can educate just one peer, we can save a whole generation of teens. Stop the opioid crisis before it stops you.